So this happened uh, a couple of days ago. I live in the suburbs of Northern California with my parents in an upper middle class neighborhood. My parents are away for their anniversary, so I've had the place to myself for the week. I got home from a late shift at work at around 1am. I go inside, shower, then I head to the kitchen to make some buffalo wings for dinner. I crack open a beer and I sit in front of the TV for a bit. I was sifting through movies to watch an HBO Plus when all of a sudden the doorbell rings. It actually startled me to the point that I jumped off the couch knocking my beer over in the process. It's now 2am and there was really no good reason for anyone to be at the door at this hour. I just sort of stared in the direction of the front door for several seconds before it rang again, followed by rapid knocking on the door and the window. Now, for whatever reason, I was no longer scared, but more annoyed at the fact that some idiot would think that it's appropriate to bang on someone's front door at this time of the night. I head over to the front door, unlock the deadbolt, and pull the front door open, leaving the chain in place. In the heat of the moment, I didn't think to look out the window first. I just sort of yanked the door open. Standing on the front porch was a woman, around mid-twenties, with long silky black hair and a purple hoodie with black pants. I said, Can I help you? To which she responded with, Oh, yeah. Sorry to bother you so late, but my boyfriend and I are having some car trouble and our phones are dead. We were wondering if you could possibly let us use yours. She pointed up the street to what looked like a dark colored sedan parked underneath the street lamp and said, see, that's us right there. Now, had this been any other person, and I would have said no, but she looked, I don't know, innocent, like she was a college student. I live in a college town, and it wasn't completely uncommon for college kids to be out late on a Friday night. I asked her where her boyfriend was, and she said that he walked to the gas station to see if anyone had a phone there. I pulled my iPhone out and told her to make it quick as I was about to go to bed. She thanked me and said that she'd only take two seconds. She took my phone, dialed a number and put the phone up to her ear. After a couple of rings, whoever she called picked up and she said, uh, Yeah, it's me. I'm borrowing someone's phone. She stopped talking and I could barely make out a man's voice on the other end. It was around this point too that... I started to feel uneasy. She was taking a, a lot longer to be done with the phone call and I started to get impatient. The whole time she just stood there staring at me with a wide-eyed expression and a creepy smile that looked forced while this person on the other end kept talking. She finally said, Oh, okay, bye, and handed me my phone back. She then said, uh, Do you think that I might be able to come inside to use your bathroom? I said no and wished her good luck before shutting the front door. And right as I was about to walk away, I began to hear her laugh and say, you made the right choice. I looked out the peephole and she was still standing on my porch, but now she had a man standing next to her. He looked to be around her age and was wearing a, a hoodie and also a face mask. The pair then started to circle around my house banging on the windows and laughing. I didn't hesitate to call 911 at this point, but they stuck around for several minutes trying to get in through my back door. I had my Glock 19 in hand aimed at the back door with 911 on speaker and was prepared to do whatever I had to do if they got in. They banged on my back door for around five minutes before they finally left. I watched them run up the street to that black sedan that I mentioned earlier and take off up the street. Cops showed up a few minutes later and they took a report. They told me that I was the third person to call them that night reporting a suspicious couple attempting to enter homes. I don't know what they had planned but I'm inclined to believe that it was nothing good. Moral of the story is never enter the front door at 2am especially without looking to see who it is first. I definitely learned my lesson that night. When I turned 18, me and my two other friends decided to take a trip to our local casino. We mostly just played simple games like slots and video roulette since it was our first time going to the casino. 
After losing some money, we decided to search for something to eat. Pretty much everything was way too overpriced, so we wandered around for quite a bit. Eventually, we reached a hallway along the border of the main floor. But we made our way down the hall looking for food, but everything was closed. We started to notice that the hall was completely vacant of people, though. As we wandered further down the hall, we reached a sort of oddly intriguing small room through a double doorway. This was the only entrance into this room. It was completely empty except for us three and about 10 to 20 slot machines, I would guess. But we were bored, though, so I decided to throw five bucks into the slot machine and spin a few times. After my second or third spin, an odd-looking man, early to mid-thirties, just appeared from behind the slot machine, seemingly out of thin air. He began watching me play and started getting uncomfortably close to us. We weren't very worried since we outnumbered him like three dudes to one. However, we were very confused. We grew more and more uneasy the longer that we stood there, not saying a word. Eventually, my friend decided to ask him what's up. The man looked at us for a second, before asking if we were all brothers. None of us looked even remotely similar, so we told him that we were just friends. He said, Oh, uh, that's great, and proceeded to ask if he could join our group. We told him that we all came together and lied in saying that we were actually planning on leaving soon. He told us that we should stay and play with him and says, My good friend Rachel over there knows all the good machines. And points to the other side of the room. We sort of slowly peer around the machine and all immediately become horrified. There was nobody else in the room with us. He was pointing into an empty corner. We all sort of stand up from our seats and slowly back out of the room, not letting our eyes leave this guy. Once he was out of sight, we turned around and sprinted down the hallway back to the main game room. We all vowed to never go back down that hallway ever again, and I never did. But curiosity eventually got the better of us. Now, about a year and too many casino trips later, we're playing blackjack back at the same casino with a fourth friend. He gets bored and hungry and says that we should go look for some food. After walking around looking for food, we made it back to the entrance of that very hallway that we vowed never to return to. The fourth friend said that we should search down there for some food. The rest of us tell him no and explain to him that we can't go back down there. He asks why, so we tell him about the experience down that hallway one year prior. He believed that we were making it up and that there was no room or slot machines in the location that we described. He explains that mum was a worker at the casino and he would know if there was a rogue room of slots in the middle of nowhere. So we did the one thing that we could do to convince him of our experience. We decided to lead him to the room. We made our way down the hallway and searched for the room, but after walking for a few minutes, we reached the end of the hall... Confused, we turned around and searched again, thinking that we had somehow missed it, but no, there was no room. We came to the conclusion that they must have moved the machines out of the room, since the casino changes things around quite frequently, so people don't gain a sense of direction on the game floor. So we once again walked down the hallway in search of an empty room, or at least a set of closed doors that would enter the room. But there was nothing. No doors even remotely close to where we remembered the room. We were completely dumbfounded and started to question our sanity after all this. But all three of us remembered the room in the same location, yet there was nothing. There was no room with slot machines. In fact, there was no room at all. To this day, neither me nor my friends understand or can explain how any of this happened. A couple of years ago, my buddy and I were bored one afternoon and we decided to explore an abandoned house that I had spotted earlier that week when I was out on a drive. We live in a town that is mostly suburbs, but if you drive like five minutes north, it's all country roads, farmland, forest, etc. The abandoned house that I spotted was in the middle of a field. 
There wasn't a paved road or gravel driveway that led up to it, so we parked as close as we could on the side of the road and walked through the tall grass to reach it. But the house looked pretty old, most likely built in the early 1900s. There were plants engulfing the entire home and part of the roof was missing from what looked like fire damage. It had obviously been abandoned for quite some time, but my friend told me that it was going to hang back when we came close to the house. He just couldn't shake the feeling that something was off and said that he was getting bad vibes from the place. I decided to keep going and when I reached the house I looked in through the windows and saw lots of weather damage and signs of neglect. The door, however, was still locked. I walked around the perimeter of the house and found a cellar door. It was unlocked. I entered and slowly started walking down an old wooden staircase. I got about halfway down, I think, and squinted, waiting for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. The only light source was the sunlight coming in from the open cellar door. It was full of old belongings, furniture, and junk. But then... In the far right corner of the room, I saw what looked like a figure standing in the darkness facing me. My stomach sank when I saw the person. Whoever they were, they were tall and they were just standing there straight with their arms at their side. I couldn't make out what they were wearing or any facial features, but I stood there for a few seconds staring back at them in shock. I thought that it had to be my mind playing tricks on me, so... I sort of squinted harder trying to make out if what I was seeing was actually a tall figure when suddenly it moved slightly and made a, a deep grunting sound. I panicked and I ran up the stairs as fast as I could. When my friend saw the look on my face when I exited the basement, he started running towards the car. He said that it looked like I had seen a ghost and when we drove away I kept looking back to see if we were being followed but thankfully... There was nobody there. So, I was walking my dog in the rain the other day. It was about 6.30. A man comes up to me and he's wearing a red jacket. Seems to be in his maybe 40s or 50s. He's missing a few teeth. But he greets my dog and we talk about him. He gives me a, a chew toy and we play with the dog for a bit. As I'm about to leave, I give him the chew toy back and he insists that I keep it. After a few minutes of back and forth, I decide to drop it and take the ball. I thank him and wish him good night. I get home and examine the chew toy closer. I take out the squeak cap and inside I see a, a chip that's blinking with a red color. I immediately grab a pen and pick the chip out and snap it in two. My mind is filled with a lot of questions about why this happened and what I should do about it. So I post a picture of it on Reddit and I'm told by an electrical engineer that this looks a lot like a tracking chip. Why a, a tracking chip would be in a dog toy, I have no idea, but do you think I should contact the police about this? Or do you think that I'm just overreacting? So a few years ago, I worked in a military prison. Our hours were 24-hour shifts that consisted of shared downtimes, sleep time, between the shifts. One half stays awake, the other half sleeps, then switches halfway through the night. Now, I've been working at this prison for a while by this point, and I was currently working in our special quarters. Our SQ was just a, a long loop with all the cells on the inside of the loop. Every 15 minutes, I had to do a health and comfort check and basically walk by each cell, making sure the inmates are alive and healthy. Every cell has a security light, so even at night time, the cells are never truly black, so we can see inside. But one specific inmate that I remember was in special quarters because he was mentally not all there. His favorite thing to do was draw, scream all day, pee outside the cell, and sleep. And one day, we had to do a cell extraction on him because... He was clawing at his gums with his fingernails and using the blood from them to draw symbols all over his cell wall. The medical was looking at him on the spot while I was going through his cell to check for like contraband and stuff. 
Looking through his drawings, he would always make childlike sketches of him playing games with his brother and a creepy shadowy silhouette of a person. His name was over his drawing of himself, his brother's over his, and dark one over the shadowy one. Cheesy, I know, but that's what was there. And while looking through these drawings, he looked at me and said, he doesn't like you being in there. I suddenly felt the hair raise on my arms and I walked right out. Keep in mind, I'm regularly told this weird stuff by inmates and it never bothers any well, seasoned officer like me, except this one time. Anyway, fast forward a couple of weeks and it's probably around 2am and I'm awake while my partner is asleep. During every 15 minute check, I noticed every cell's security light was on as normal. Otherwise, I would have to write a report about it. I was sitting in the little cell that we used for our food for the day, just eating. When all of a sudden, I hear this extremely loud screaming. I could not make out what the screaming was or what even language it was. But my arm hairs raised again and I ran to find the source. And every single inmate was sound asleep, but... What caught my attention was that strange inmate security light was out and there was no way that they would be able to mess with the lights the way that they were installed. I quickly yelled to another officer in the other bays if they heard that screaming thinking that maybe it came from one of their bays. But not one of the other officers heard the screaming. I apparently was the only one that did. But there was something off about that guy and... Since that day, I always requested to never be posted in there again, even though it was one of the most sought-after posts. I guess something just really bothered me about that night. So this story comes from the 70s, where my grandfather dropped my grandmother, mum, and her two sisters off to do some shopping on his way to work. Since he wasn't able to pick them up, they hitchhiked home. My mum at the time was only around maybe 10 or 11. The middle sister would have been 7 or 8 or so. And the youngest was about maybe a year old. But they get picked up by a guy in a pickup truck. Who has them all sit in the back row with one of them holding the baby. My grandmother was giving directions to their home from the highway. But the guy ignored her and went by their exit claiming that he had to make a stop first. He didn't really say much else after that to them during the drive as well. My mum remembers my grandmother being very quiet and very nervous. But eventually they came up to a farm and the driver tells them to wait in the car and goes inside the house. While he's gone they just sort of sit there terrified. I mean, they're in the middle of nowhere and know that they couldn't make it out on foot. A few minutes later, the driver comes out with a second guy who looks into the truck, sees my mum's youngest sister, and he immediately starts flipping out, screaming at the driver that he shouldn't have brought the baby back. They aren't going to do anything with her and some other things that I can't remember. And ends up telling him to get them away from the farm. The driver gets back into the truck, apologizes, and they get back on the highway and drive again in silence. My grandmother, normally a very smart woman, had him drive directly to their house of all things. Although, I suspect her reasoning was that she'd already given him the address before anything seemed off. But thankfully, they lived at that house for several years and, luckily enough, never saw either of them a second time. So my name is Charles and I'm an assistant manager at a sub shop, but back when I was just a shift manager, we had this employee named John. John was only working for us for about a month when he called us in to pick him up from his roommate's house because of some problems that they had. We took him to our place and had a couple of drinks with us and we ended up sort of cheering him up. He was always quiet about his social life though. But he would talk to other people on Tinder and meet up with a date or would go to a store that he liked shopping at that was across the street from us. He stays with us for about maybe two weeks and he tells us that he planned to hang out with a friend. My fiancé gives him a big hug since they became really good friends. He leaves our place and 
just doesn't really come back for a couple of days. We get worried and try to get into contact with him, but somehow we just couldn't find his profile or any social media platform, and whenever we called, his line was disconnected. Honestly, it was almost like he just disappeared. He left all of his personal belongings behind too, along with his clothes. This was just a very out of character of John to do, so we were trying to figure out what happened and hope that he would still be with his friend, but we eventually just accepted that maybe he just left with no warning. Anyway, a couple of days go by and I'm at work in the middle of my shift and I see this really, really tall middle-aged man walk into the store to get a sub and as I began to ring him out, he kind of just stares at me. I look back and I ask if I knew him and weirdly he asks about John and this really creepy vibe just radiates from this guy and I asked him what kind of affiliation did he have with John and he just looked at me again and said he was a good worker. Then he walked out and I never saw him again. But then we got a call on the store phone which so happened to be his grandmother who apparently had filed a missing persons report because she was someone that he spoke to every day and ever since then there has been no trace of him. Something tells me that the guy had something to do with it but something also told me to stop asking questions. He gave me a huge chill down my spine. I don't know where John is, we haven't heard from him since, neither is his grandmother and it's been a long time now but Wherever he is, I really hope that he's okay. So, I should clarify before I begin that we're no longer friends. It all started when we met in primary school year 4. I had just joined a new school and was assigned a person to stay with me and introduce me to other people. Her name was Jay. She seemed nice enough, her mother was in the PTA and a very kind woman, but Jay was always just really odd. She would look at me like I ruined her life or something, always staring with her hand behind her back. Anyway, skip forward to when we were at secondary school, Jay and I were at her house, her parents had gone out for the night, we were baking brownies when I turned around to get a baking tray or something and... The moment that I grabbed it and turned back to her, I saw her slip something into them. I sort of brushed it off and decided that my eyes were playing tricks on me. Later that night when the brownies were done and we had them out on the plate ready to eat, I heard a knock at the door. I got up to open it but froze when I reached the door because I heard Jay get up and walk out of the room, yelling, bathroom. She went like five minutes ago though. I remember what I got up to do when I heard another knock at the door followed by a female voice yelling help. I ran to open it but I got a really bad feeling so decided to put the chain on it first but when I did there was nobody out there. I felt weirded out and really scared so I put a movie on and waited for Jay to come back after calling my mother to tell her what had happened she told me that she was going to pick me up soon. I realized that I had forgotten about the brownies, so to calm my nerves, I took a bite. Food always helps, right? And all I remember after that is waking up in a hospital and never seeing Jay ever again. In fact, nobody's seen Jay for like four or five years, including her own parents. So thankfully, uh, I can talk about this now as I'm no longer with the company that I once was. I just didn't want my boss or colleagues to think that I was a, a crackpot. Anyway, here goes. So, in 2018, I was working for a company installing video conferencing solutions and one particular job took me to a mental health facility in Brisbane, Australia called Walton Park Hospital. Originally, it was called the Woogaroo Lunatic Asylum. It's a large part of a precinct with multiple buildings, 
many dating from maybe like the 1865s and has quite a sinister history with the reports of intolerable living conditions, uh, terrible assault and abuse and mass burials even. The main hospital now lies derelict and is frequented by adventure seekers. However, my job on this day was based in one of the smaller wards. It was called the Bostock House. It was built in 1885 and I don't think this building has housed patients for quite some time and it still seems to have the original structure and layout of like a 19th century psychiatric ward with rooms that are more like prison cells. The ground floor has one main open area, possibly a, a day lounge area in its time maybe, which features a large boardroom table that is used by local community groups for meetings and such. But this is where I was to install the video conferencing system. There is another large fully enclosed room directly behind this space, maybe about 15 meters or 50 feet down a hallway, and the rest from memory is pretty much just hallways with cells. When I arrived, I was met by the customer, an elderly gentleman who remained in the room with me the whole time while I set up the hardware. There was nobody else in this building, that much I was aware of. And after finishing the installation, I needed to test the equipment, so I took my laptop into the other room, sat at one of the desks, there were a few in there, and connected a two-way video session to the main conference room equipment. The customer and I had like a five-minute call, which all went well. With the door closed in this room, you could not hear anything coming from outside, so it was a good test scenario. I wanted to swap places with the customer and have him come into the room to experience the video and audio from my laptop as well. So I left the live meeting connected and went out to the conference room to suggest this. When I got there we first had a brief conversation and during this time we both noticed some strange noises coming through the feed from my unattended laptop back in the other room. It sort of sounded a bit like a maybe rustling of pages some chair scrapes I think and very clearly a man coughing but as I couldn't really see anyone on the video feed I assumed someone had entered the room and was out of camera view. I think large room small laptop camera. The more obvious possibility of someone remotely joining the meeting was basically impossible though due to the custom security protocols that I use. It was at this point though that the customer asked if I had brought someone with me that he didn't know about, and of course I said no. I also said that I thought that maybe there was another staff member in the building, but then he said that, not that he knew of, and we sort of both just looked at each other for a second in bewilderment. I proceeded back to the room, expecting it to now be occupied, but... When I did, there was no one there. I again spoke to the customer on the video and it all seemed normal. The noises had stopped. I again went back out to the conference room and we stood in silence for about 30 seconds. And then the noises started up again. This time, I ran back to the room and again, it was completely unoccupied and the noises had stopped. At this stage, I felt the customer was getting a bit uncomfortable with the situation and I was also getting a bit freaked out, but as I had to maintain a professional manner, I decided not to make a big deal about it. I closed my laptop and joined him back in the main room and just as I was about to make a funny quip and say my goodbyes, the building's fire alarms went off. We both visibly jumped but settled immediately to deal with the situation we went to the alarm control box, but there was nothing that we could do to stop it. I stayed with him while he called the facility services, and within around 10 minutes, a tech guy came out and stopped it. The three of us stood for a few minutes talking about how the tech couldn't remember it ever going off before in the years that he'd been there, apart from tests that is, and then, lo and behold, it goes off again. At this point... I felt I didn't need to be there and so I left quite briskly. Before I end this though, just to answer a few points of clarification, there is no possibility that another party had joined the meeting. It was a secure two-way connection and someone would have needed a very specific code that only I knew to have joined it. 
I checked my laptop to make sure no other media was playing in the background. It was a, a fine, calm day, not windy at all. It seemed pretty clear to me that there was nobody else in the building, but I admit that I can't be 100% certain, I guess. But even if there was, I, I really just don't see how they could have exited the room quickly enough to avoid my detection. Especially that second time when I ran into the room. Also, I do have a background in science, and to be honest, I would prefer to find a logical, worldly-based explanation for this, but this one, it honestly just has me stumped. I acknowledge that there's a lot that we just don't understand about the universe yet, and after this experience, I must admit that I now have a, a somewhat more open mind.